Welcome to another episode of Biz Money Talks with Tracy Bissett. I am your host, Tracy Bissett, and I am a financial coach for entrepreneurs. So it is absolutely my privilege to help make sense of the financial side of the business for business owners. I'm really delighted we have a very special guest here with us today. Welcome to the show, Sabita. Thank you so much, Tracy, for having me on your show to talk about LinkedIn. You are welcome. So as you, you may have seen in the description, this episode features Sabita Singh, president of Triveta Consulting, Inc. And prior to forming her company in 2018, she led digital functions for companies, including KPMG Canada and Sun Life Financial. And after recognizing the power of LinkedIn at KPMG, Sabita has specialized in becoming a strategic LinkedIn coach, trainer, and speaker. Uh, so we recently hosted Sabita on the Young Money podcast, and I knew she had so much value to offer to all of you as well as business owners. So we're so delighted she's joining us live. Uh, so welcome again. And I'd love it if you can tell the listeners just a little bit more about you in your own words and uh, about your business. So Tracy, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And, um, you know, really for me, as you said, I've worked in corporate for most of my career. My last full-time job was head of digital marketing at KPMG in Canada for six years. And in that role, I was immersed in LinkedIn. At that time, LinkedIn was really seen more as, you know, just a, a site, you know, for career search and for looking for a new job, but not so much as a networking site or professional branding place. So my mandate, a big part of my role at KPMG was really showing our employees and our accounting partners how to use LinkedIn to you know, build a professional brand and even to ultimately you know, attract new business to the firm as well. So you know, back in 2018, at the beginning of the year, I lost my job due to a restructuring that happened, which is happening all the time, especially in this day and age. But you know, I woke up the next morning and really um, you know, thought if I don't launch my own business now, I never will. So that's exactly what I did. I decided to focus my business on LinkedIn because I really do, do believe in the power of the platform, not just for big companies like KPMG, but for smaller companies and individuals as well. So that's why now a big part of my focus is on helping you know, people and trans executives in transition working professionals and entrepreneurs, you know, build a powerful presence on LinkedIn that's going to attract new career and business opportunities. And specifically what I do is I write their profiles for them and also take them through my coaching, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in bigger group settings to really help them understand how to build that active and visible presence on the platform that's going to attract new opportunities for them. So that's me in a, me in a nutshell. <laughs> Wonderful. And it's so Im imperative as business owners that we have a strong network that we continue to not only develop it, but also maintain it. And sometimes we don't know where to start when it comes to LinkedIn. You see little snippets of do this, don't do that. And so to be able to hear directly from you is really key. So we're going to hear from you a little bit about the platform, certainly how to build our networks using it and so much more. I think you're going to touch on social selling a little bit so we can be proficient and not be those people that we don't like getting their messages and we just want to delete them and not connect with them. Uh, so that's, that's why you're here. And some people who may be watching and we've got some people watching right now. So, Hey, people who are watching live, great to have you with us. And we want to have these strong business networks, but we don't necessarily know how to use the platform to our advantage. And so to level set before we get into some of your best practices, what is the platform all about and what can we do using it? So, you know, LinkedIn is the largest uh, professional network in, in the world. It has over 700 50 million members. Um, and the key thing there is that, you know, 40, over 40 million of those members are at that decision maker level. And then another 8 million are at that C-suite level. So if you're in, you know, a business to business, uh, you know, type of environment and that's the type of business that you're running, um, you know, making sure that you have a strong presence on LinkedIn, it's key. 80% of uh, new business um, for B2B companies comes from LinkedIn over other social you know, networks. So if you're thinking about whether to invest your time in Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn, if you are a B2B company, um, then this really is the place to, to spend your time. Excellent. And so we can connect with people, we can message, we can post content, lots of variety in terms of what we can do on here, which is great. And in the Absolutely. pandemic, just to wrap that up, you know, there's yeah. been a 48 percent increase in interactions on LinkedIn during the pandemic because people just can't go out and meet face to face anymore. So as a networking site, the power of that platform just keeps growing, you know, every day. Excellent. And so 
everybody wants to have these strong networks and, and business owners need to do it, but they're also wearing lots of hats. And I know myself, I'm wearing a lot of hats. From your experience, what gets in the way of, of developing these networks and maintaining them in the way that we would like? I think the biggest thing that gets in the way that I think we can all relate to is that people tend to sell too quickly on LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is all about building relationships. I think we've all been in that place where you get an invitation to connect and you accept that invitation. And within what feels like three seconds, somebody is asking you for a meeting, you know, a 15 minute Zoom call or something else. And it's frustrating and it's annoying because you don't know that individual yet. You haven't built that relationship. So the key with LinkedIn is to really build that relationship over a series of interactions then transition that relationship offline to continue the selling process because the sale doesn't happen on LinkedIn. And I imagine too, um, having kind of a, a regular time or a dedicating time regularly to being active on there uh, increases our ability to do those relationships and build them and maintain them. That's right. It, you know, it really is a social platform. So I always encourage my clients <laughs> to be social on it. A lot of them tend to be voyeurs, especially when they're starting out, because it's a bit nerve wracking mm -hmm. to be putting out content or engaging with people when you're not used to the platform at all. So I really help my clients overcome that discomfort, I guess you could say. And um, and that's a big part of it. It's just really engaging with your network on, on a daily basis on the platform. Even if you're not putting out content, I think that's really the, the key thing is to go into the newsfeed every day and even just spend five minutes a day, you know, liking, commenting or sharing what you're seeing um, from your from people in your network. And every time you do that, that creates a visibility around yourself. Because think about it, when you're on LinkedIn, you can see what other people are doing and what they're saying. And that's Absolutely. the same thing that happens for you. So, you know, Tracy, I can see that you're, you know, liking something or commenting or publishing a great post about one of your upcoming, you know, episodes of Biz Money Talks. And that just puts you top of mind for me, right? And you want to be an individual, if you're a business owner, doing the exact same thing so people think about you and they, and you, they stay top of mind as well. Works both ways. Yeah. And when I'm posting, I use uh, my computer more so, but when I'm liking and commenting and checking stuff out, I'm usually on my phone. So I take the minutes where I have them in between meetings where I'm doing something to, so it doesn't need to be a lot, a lot of time exactly. spent on it. It can be, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you're still lying in bed and just taking that five minutes to interact with people in your newsfeed from your mobile phone, it can be as simple as that, you know, just to kind of get that, that engagement and that visibility going. Excellent. So for the business owners who are catching us live or they're catching on the replay, what are some success tips um, to help them uh, have a good time on LinkedIn and or strategies that they can use to be successful? Well, that first foundational piece is around building an all-star LinkedIn profile. And, uh, you know, an all-star LinkedIn profile includes seven key components. And according to LinkedIn, when you have an all-star profile with those seven components, you get 40 times more views of your profile than someone that's missing some of those key components. So those things include things like having a professional photo, making sure you've listing at least five skills, um, making sure that you've got at least 50 connections on your on your profile, um, you know, listing your industry. There's, you know, those seven kind of basic things that need to be done to make sure that you've got an all-star profile. When I work with my clients, what I do is I take that to the next level, right? So when I write the profile for them, there's some additional things I like to do to really help them stand out on LinkedIn. So the first, for example, is helping, you know, writing an attention grabbing headline for them mm -hmm. that really has keywords that improves their discoverability. So if someone's searching for them, that they've got those keywords in their headline. You know, I see a lot of small business owners that have the word founder in their headline, but no one, none of your clients are going to be typing in founder to find you. So you've got to build out those words in your, in your headline to make sure it's including other things related to who you are and the services you provide so that people can find you. For example, my profile says, you know, LinkedIn profile writer. It's very specific as part of my headline. And I've had people, you know, in Canada and even in the U.S. come to me because they've typed into, you know, search on Google or LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile writer, and I've come down at the top of search. So those keywords are really, really key. And then having a tagline that really speaks to what you're passionate about or what you do in that headline can really help you stand out and get attention so people click through and read your profile. Now the about section is another big component, right? So what I see with a lot of um, a lot of people on LinkedIn, especially business owners, is it reads more of a sales pitch, and you want to make sure it reads more of a career story 
versus a sales pitch because it's back to what I said earlier. Nobody likes to be sold to on LinkedIn. So um, what I like to do is really make sure that the, that the about section really does convey that individual's unique value proposition and their career story. Let's take someone like a leadership coach, right? There's a lot of leadership coaches on LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's really important as a leadership coach to make sure people see in your about section, you know, what your work experience is, what your personal life experience is, what kind of training you've had, the kinds of clients you work with. All of that helps people understand why they should work with you over somebody else that has the same title on their profile. But what I see is they'll talk a lot about their service offering, but they won't share enough about themselves and what makes them amazing. And are we writing that in the first person or in the third person? Excellent question. <laughs> so, you know, 100% in writing it in first person because, okay. again, it's about building relationships. So when you're connecting with somebody one-to-one -one, when they're reading your profile in first person, they want to connect with you as an individual, not that third person kind of formal individual. Excellent. So that's a great tip um, and so important to spend time on that profile. I imagine it's also equally important to have a professional looking picture that people can clearly see your face. I, I know I have uh, some of my students, they try to do kind of artsy type um, photos and they might just put their side profile or do other things. But uh, I think having the, the way you're actually going to show up when people meet you is probably pretty important. Yeah, it's so true. And, and that's, that's a first impression piece, right? So profiles uh, with photos get 26 times more opportunities and views than profiles that don't, right? So having that photo is key and having a professional photo makes it even better. I always say, hey, make sure it's a head and shoulders shot where you're smiling so you look approachable, like someone that people want to do business with and with, work with, right? And if you can't get out to see a professional photographer right now due to the pandemic, uh, with a lot of my clients, I'll say to them, get someone at home to take a photo of you outside because uh, the lighting's so much better. You don't end up with shadows and all sorts of other issues. And it's just a really great way to refresh that photo without having to worry about the money or just the, the challenge of trying to get to a professional photographer. Yeah, and, it's, and so better to have an amateur photo that looks professional than none at all so that you can get those views. Did you say it was 26 times more? Yeah, more exactly. Views? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When, you, when you've got a photo there, because, you know, if you don't have a photo, it's like being on a dating site without an image that <laughs> look kind of creepy, right? So, uh, yeah. so it, it makes all the difference. And with iPhones these days, the quality of the iPhone shot is yes. really quite good, especially outside. So if someone just takes that photo of you, it's probably going to look quite, you know, quite strong. on the Excellent. Too. Yeah. Now you already alluded to it on um, those <laughs> premature sales pitches that are coming, but what, <laughs> what missteps do you see that you would love all of the business owners who check out this interview to avoid so they can uh, stay on the success track? Yeah. So that's that first and foremost one really is around. Yes. Don't rush to sell, you know, build that relationship. And a big part of building that relationship is, you know, back to what I was saying earlier about just putting out a series of messages to really build a relationship with the person. So, the invitation to connect should be customized, right? And without a sales pitch in it, then, you know, send a, a follow-up uh, message. It's a thank you message that really maybe sparks a conversation. And in that message, you could be, you know, talking about something that you've seen in their profile, the company they work for, something that they've posted online, all of those different things can make a, a big difference in just start, starting to build that relationship. The more you customize your interaction, the more people are gonna think you're genuine and wanna actually connect with you and potentially have a call um, separately from, you know, just engaging on the platform overall. Excellent. And I know um, I try to, when I'm connecting with people I don't know, um, to find something in common or to let them know why I'm, I'm reaching out. Yeah. I saw your post and I was intrigued. I want to be able to see more of your content. So I um, thought it'd be great to connect. And people love to be complimented. So if you're complimenting them on their content or complimenting them on the company they work for, the job that they have, all of that really does make it make a big difference and just kind of how people feel when they're starting to build that relationship with you. Excellent. And when you work with your clients and they follow your instructions and they, they get the all-star profile, you, you help coach them on creating those connections, whether it be for job search or for business opportunities, uh, what kinds of results are you seeing? So, you know, one of the things that, you know, we see quite regularly is that within the first week of putting up that all-star LinkedIn profile, they'll see an increase in their profile views and invitations to connect because it's got all those key components that really help improve the discoverability of the profile overall. So that's something consistently that I tend to see with my clients. And then, you know, in terms of just a good client example in terms of results is, you know, one of my clients, she works in, she works in corporate, but I wrote a built her LinkedIn profile for her to really help her stand out and shine as an expert in her space. I included some 
great stats about the work she's done and the kind of global organizations she's worked with. And, um, and as a result of that, within the two, first two weeks of putting up her profile, she got two great consulting opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that was because, you know, she really is looking to make that move from corporate to consulting, which a lot of people are trying to do today. Mm -hmm. And so getting those two consulting opportunities are just those, you know, that first step in the right direction to start to build that income and the experience to help her make that full transition over. And I know for myself coming from uh, corporate to consulting, you know, it's such a great feeling to be able to do that and helping other people, you know, take that step and that leap themselves is something that I, I love doing. I know you did the same thing yourself because yeah. you worked in corporate for many years. So that's, you know, the kind of story that I love to have happen. And just makes me happy about the work that I'm doing now. Now, um, I know that you posted about this, um, about social selling. So can you describe mm -hmm. the concept to us and uh, what that really looks and, and feels like if we're trying to learn this new skill or, or how to execute it? Sure. Yeah, great question. So social selling, you know, it's even more key today because of the pandemic, right? We can't go out, you know, if you're trying to meet with prospects or clients and build relationships face to face. It's just so challenging to do right now. And that's not going to go away because, you know, even with hybrid work now, people are not going to be going back to the office full time. So getting that face time is going to get harder and harder. So social selling is really, you know, virtual selling. And it's about building relationships through platforms like LinkedIn that are going to lead to business opportunities. And um, the really cool thing about LinkedIn is that you can actually go in uh, and Google what is my social selling index on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. see what your social selling score is, which is kind of cool. And it's made up of several key components, right? So when I take my clients through my training, I take them through all the four components to help them build a strong brand and increase their social selling index score. So for example, I show them how to find you know connections and leads on LinkedIn, even in the free version of LinkedIn. There's so much, so much, you know, different criteria that you can use to really build a great um, a search query. So it can be things like, you know, previous company that somebody worked for, what their job title is, what industry they're in, their location. All of that's available in a free search to help build a powerful uh, search um, query that can then result in you finding some really great prospects on LinkedIn. So there's that piece that I show them how do you do. And then secondly, you know, how to engage with insights is a big part of it as well. And um, that's a big part of my business is around, you know, that's my differentiator, I guess you could say, is showing my clients how to build their presence as experts or thought leaders on LinkedIn to really, you know, win new business, to win trust, to build credibility, and even to command a higher price for your services because you're standing out as an expert because you're, you know, the top echelon in terms of, um, you know, individuals that are working in your particular area. So there's, there's, there's that piece, you know, I've built a five-step methodology and how to, you know, build um, your presence as a thought leader on LinkedIn. So that's a, a second piece. And then thirdly, you know, really around how to transition that relationship offline too, to build a relationship and transition it to continue the selling process. So, so those are all the key, key components of social selling. It's having that great profile, you know, finding the right connections, building relationships, engaging with insights. And all of that makes up your social selling score, which can increase as you continue to build your strength in that in that particular area. And it's so important today because, like I said, we just can't go out and meet the same way anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. I um, I check mine periodically and I <laughs> take a picture of it. Good. So that I can see like over time, is it going up or down? Um, because I tend to connect with a lot of my students um, as a professor as well. Sometimes my score does go down um, because it's seeing that they're not um, in the decision making category. Okay. Some of the roles, so in the, the one category that measures that, sometimes I go down a little bit, but pretty consistent. So you can see that if you, you do put some work into the activity where maybe historically you hadn't, you can see the score move. So uh, it's pretty neat to be able to, to check that out. Um, so I think that's awesome how you gave us a little rundown of what that looks like and the things to be really focused on um, so that people can be um, thinking about how to approach that from an authentic, genuine way and not trying to just um, pitch things to, to everyone that we might come in contact with on LinkedIn. Because uh, remember, uh, as Sabita's mentioned, it's a professional network. We want to act professionally. Uh, and we were talking just before I hit record. Um, sometimes there's these inappropriate uh, people looking for uh, romantic entanglements uh, on LinkedIn. So <laughs> don't do that either. Uh, that's certainly not the place to do that. So I, I, like, that, I like that phrase, romantic entanglements. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's an odd, it's an odd space to get you know propositioned uh, romantically, but it it does happen for sure. I've experienced Absolutely. that myself and clients and yourself, you know. So um, yeah, probably leave that more to Facebook or Instagram versus versus LinkedIn. <laughs> Absolutely. So before I let you go, do you have any final tips for the business owners who've tuned in? It might be something that you've already said that you want to reiterate just to reinforce, or it might be something brand new you want to make sure that they're taking away from the, the interview and all of the insights you've shared already. Sure. And I think you know, the biggest thing is, is it doesn't need to take a lot of time to actually build your presence and visibility on LinkedIn. The number one tip really is to just go into the newsfeed every day, just for a few minutes a day. And, uh, you know, like a post that you see, there's all sorts of different emoticons that you can use to do that. And the person that's putting out that content does check to see if you just liked it or hearted mm -hmm. it or shown care or celebrating. There's all those different things you can use. So take the time to, to use that. And a lot of people, you know, will use that thumbs up. So I think, you know, using the different ones is a very good, good way to stand out. And, um, and commenting is key too. A lot of people don't comment, you know, they'll just kind of scroll through their newsfeed. Mm -hmm. But if you comment, other people see your comments and the individual that's put up that post, it really helps create some great engagement around their post, which will help improve its amplification and visibility on LinkedIn too. And then going that third step to share somebody's, you know, post on LinkedIn, again, just amplifies their post with your network. And then somebody else does that. It just keeps going and growing and growing in terms of exposure, which is, you know, incredibly powerful. So it's a social network, take a few minutes a day, you know, be social on it. And I think people will really see a huge difference in terms of, of their visibility on the platform. Excellent. And it doesn't take very long to leave a comment. And um, I typically share jobs or other opportunities that I think people in my network may benefit from, or, or they have people in their lives who may benefit. Um, just about an hour ago, I shared that a connection of mine is looking for a family lawyer in a certain area. Um, so by the magnification of everyone's network, we we probably can find somebody exact for what they need. So um, when you you are giving and you share other people's things, it kind of comes back for you. Yeah. Uh, so, so always good to be giving on that. Now, before I let you go, what are you working on now? And where can people go to learn more about you and the services that you offer? Oh, thank you. Um, so what I'm working on now is building out um, my social selling training for, for organizations especially in the IT and tech sector, because that's where you've got a lot of people in business development um, or a lot of salespeople that just really haven't had a lot of experience with selling in this virtual world that we're in now. So that's been, that's really becoming my target. So I'm building out kind of full corporate training programs for sales professionals. And, um, and, and I've got to say, you know, this really does work for myself too. Most of my business over the past three years, you know, I'm now hitting my three year anniversary is really around, um, you know, referrals or, or LinkedIn leads. So I know it does work because it's worked for me. And, and I love seeing that success story, you know, as well for my clients too. So what I wanted to offer, you know, your audience today is the um, opportunity to participate in a complimentary uh, LinkedIn strategy call with me for the first three people that uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. And I always say customize that invitation to connect. Uh, that's a good best practice. So just letting me know that you're interested in that strategy session. The first three people that reach out to me, I'm happy to give that away. And then I do encourage the rest of your audience to, to connect with me on LinkedIn because, you know, my goal is to build my presence as a thought leader around the topic of LinkedIn. So I share a lot of great contents about, uh, about LinkedIn specifically. So by connecting, they'll get a lot of those good tips as well. So hopefully um, people will take the time to connect with me. I know you've got that in, in your notes yeah. in terms of my links. That's, that would be great. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so um, Sabita's made such a generous offer to you. Take her up on it. Uh, leverage her expertise to up your profile and certainly um, do take the time to connect with her. The thing about LinkedIn, it's a living, breathing platform that continues to change. So by staying connected to her, you're going to stay up to date on the changes that are coming. Sometimes they introduce new features. Sometimes they take them away. Uh, yeah. And there's also new insights always coming. So you'll be able to keep up to date um, based on um, connecting with Sabita, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining us today live to be able to share your expertise, 
the results you're seeing with your clients, the missteps you want uh, everybody to avoid, and how to really show up authentically and, and from a genuine place to use the platform uh, with not a lot of time every day to increase your reach and, and really uh, lay that foundation so that you can be successful in your business or if anybody's tuning in from corporate um, to, to further your career as well. So thank you so much, Sabita. You're welcome, Tracy, and thank you for inviting me to be part of the session, and I wish you the best of success with your business as well, and I'm sure we'll be partnering again in the future. I look forward to it. Excellent. Uh, so there you have it, listeners. Sabita Singh, um, LinkedIn coach, trainer, and speaker. Absolutely do want to take the time to connect with her, um, take advantage of her wonderful offer to participate in those strategy sessions. Uh, as I mentioned from the top, I am a financial coach for business owners, and we have our next round of the Cash Control Bootcamp, uh, which is now open for enrollment. We're going to be kicking things off on November 2nd. Uh, it is a six-week live online group program for business owners across all different industries, all different sizes of businesses. So I'll drop the link for you. Um, check the notes or check the comments if you're catching us on Facebook or LinkedIn. And I uh, would love to have a chat about that. And LinkedIn is a great place to reach out to me as well. So until next time, take good care and stay financially fit.